Oh, God. Too much fucking coffee. Oh, God, too much fucking coffee. Not enough sleep. I don't fucking feel good. Oh, God. Whoa, Jack. Whoa, Jack, I need you to do the video today. I haven't done a video in fucking almost a week. My fans need to see me. Uh... Ah, fresh smell of a crisp morning with a coffee in hand. Doesn't really get much better than that. So guys, we are back with another episode, back with another live stream. I wanted to talk with you today about the ongoing continued attacks we're seeing on Tether. And uh, this is an ongoing thing. And crypto in general, not just Tether, but... Um, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing this stuff kind of in an ongoing basis and we got to keep an eye out on it because we're, as crypto enthusiasts, we don't want to let our knowledge of what they are doing uh, get too, too far out of, out of reach, right? We want to make sure that what the governments, what the world powers, what everybody, what the, what the normies, the NPCs, all the people that are just kind of floating through this crypto revolution, we want to make sure we know where their heads at least somewhat at, as well as their actions on on different topics involving their continued attacks on the cryptocurrency community, uh, expansion of innovation, technology, and other things that provide censorship to the front end user like us, guys. So guys, what does this mean? Well, we're looking at the U.S. Treasury campaigning for amplified powers to chase crypto overseas. So what's going on, basically, is this lawmaker, this Dep Dep Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, Wally Adeyemo, has lobbied senior members of Congress with a proposal mapped out in writing that he calls a set of common sense recommendations to expand our authorities to broaden our tools and resources to go after illicit actors in the digital space. Now you guys tell me if that makes any fucking sense. To me it does not make any sense because how is the U.S. Treasury Department going to go after Tether, a stable coin that has been around longer than any of these United States-backed stable coins? Tether is, remember guys, Tether is minted on a variety of different blockchains. Bitcoin Cash included. Uh, I believe it's uh, minted on Osmisigo, uh, Solana, B and Binance. I mean, there's a lot of different coins and blockchains that Tether is being minted on. So it's basically, it's not possible. Like the, the ability for the U.S. Treasury Department or DOJ or any of these U.S. regulatory private privately funded government agencies is it's not something that you can actually do right it's not there's there's no way to go after you know these 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 lawmakers and these these official appointed officials they say things and they go about in an action type way but at the root core it's at some of how this stuff is built out from an infrastructure standpoint, it just is not the case. You can't go after Tether. It's almost like saying we're going to go after every physical paper dollar in the world, in every country, regardless of our jurisdiction in that country. It's simply not possible. This is a, this is a, for one, this isn't possible. Second off, even if the United States wanted to go into every single country, and audit, somehow audit Tether's bank holdings as well as, not even to mention, the cryptocurrency that's been minted on all these blockchains. Somebody drop it in the comment box to let me know how that would even be a fucking thing. How is that possible? How is the United States going to go after every Tether, unit of Tether, backed by every dollar in banks around the world, that they have no jurisdiction in. Do you think that world powers are going to be cool with the United States rolling up where they're not belonging on a mass scale? We're not talking one country. We're talking multiple countries. What do you think the world would do? And how do you think crypto would react if that started being the case? Yeah, guys, we're going to go into Iraq. We're going to go into uh, any place without a central bank. We're going to go to 
every country that is known, a known enemy, and we're going to walk in and we're going to say, hey, we need your auditing bank records because this is a world problem that we need to get in the bag. It's not going to happen, guys. So Treasury Wally Ademo has lobbied senior members of the Congress with a proposal mapped out in writing that he called a set of common sense recommendations to expand our authorities and broaden our tools and resources to go after illicit actors in the digital asset space. So, I mean, I have to read it to you again, guys, because this is absolutely absurd. Then he goes about talking about how, you know, all these terrorist groups and Hamas and all these bad actors go about raising money for their illicit activity. And, uh, you know, he's basically saying, you know, it will not only cut off a firm from the U.S. financial system, but it will also expose any firm that continues to do business with the sanctioned entity to, cu- to being cut off by the United States financial system. He also goes about, talks about saying that, that after they bust these people, these illicit actors, these bad actors, these bad banks, these bad uh, countries, really is kind of what he's saying, they're going to put them on blast and let everybody know what they're doing by exposing them, quote, quote, unquote. And uh, I'm not really sure what that means or how that how that means what they're trying to do in a text written sense. But it just seems that this is simply just not possible. Crypto exchanges, virtual asset service providers, virtual asset wallet providers, certain blockchain validator nodes and decentralized finance services requiring them to meet certain anti-money laundering demands. So you're going to tell decentralized blockchains that have nodes around the world to come to a consensus agreement to be an enemy of crypto and join the United States. I mean, is that is that kind of how you guys are interpreting what I'm telling you here? So, I mean, this is just, this is, and then it goes about this guy named Austin Campbell, from the Zero Knowledge Consulting noted that the proposal has some reasonable points. Now, it doesn't matter if it has any reasonable points, Austin. The reality is, is that nobody is going to come to a consensus agreement that the United States is just going to be able to barrel on through uh, their sanctioned, uh, sanctioned imaginary lines and just walk on in their country and just basically start auditing every bank that Tether is supposed to be held in, guys. So it sounds a bit repetitive, but please, somebody give me some kind of clear guidance on if this is even a possibility. Can the U.S. stop Tether? And if they can, how are they going to stop the Tether that's been minted on all these blockchains that are basically, you know, trading on all these DEXs and decentralized exchanges around the world that don't even have jurisdiction in the United States? And vice versa, jurisdiction doesn't have basically... Uh, a, a foot in the in the crypto space in this case, right? All right, guys, that'll wrap it up in this episode where we're just following the continued United States attacks on the crypto space. You know, an ongoing battle. I don't see this ever being an, a finished thing, but uh, we can hope that maybe we will come to an agreement that it doesn't have to be a thing because it's not possible, guys. Yeah? All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next episode.